Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Reboot Review, colon, It's Alphanumeric. I'm Robin. I'm Katie. And yeah, this is a show where we watch Reboot and talk about Reboot, pretty much. All the time. All the time, all yeah. All Reboot, all the time. We're going to talk over Reboot, just to clarify. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the episode that we're watching today is number seven. And in contrast to the last episode that we did, where No Sprite has gone before, I find these episodes a major contrast because I love this one. Yeah. This is, I think, a really great episode of Reboot. And what's really funny about it is, because if you watch the last episode, my biggest beef with Where No Sprite Has Gone Before is that they pick two major things to reference. Star Trek and, like, superheroes, super frenzy kinds of things, which on their own would be great and fine. And then they meld them together, and it just does not work. It's messy. And like, it, it should work. You know, a Star Trek episode should be great fun. A superhero episode should be great fun. And they just make a mess of it. This episode, on the other hand, spends the whole time referencing one thing that people our age watching the show would have never heard of or ever cared about. And that should not work, but it does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although I have to admit, when I was a kid, I was like, this is weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. It definitely felt weird even at the time. Yeah. But it's a, just a really nicely made episode. So you, yeah. like, it's, it's good it weird good to me. Too. Yeah, like, yeah. And it's, like, the last episode that we reviewed is all about creating a conflict where a conflict doesn't make sense. Whereas this one, it's all about the inner turmoil of a character who naturally would be having inner Which turmoil. Which is amazing in and of itself. So yeah. I'm going to start the episode now because these are all things that I want to kind of deep dive weave, into, weave into our as tapestry. we're watching it. Yeah. So we're going to start now. So for anybody who doesn't know, the thing that this whole episode I is referencing is a really obscure kind of Kafka-esque TV series from, or like a miniseries, I think, from the 60s or 70s. I should have looked this up beforehand. (laughs) But it's called The Prisoner. You sound like you know what you're talking about. It's called The Prisoner. And uh, it was kind of a cult classic sort of thing, but it was not something that a 15-year-old in 1997 would have ever heard of, ever been exposed to. It's still a cult classic thing um, with a very sort of narrow, devoted fan base that never I don't think got adapted or turned into anything else it just um, is what it is yeah it's it just last is there My and format. it's a thing that some people just remember My very well format. um again it's it's I and it's very like again Kafka as twins Twin Peaks-ish I would right. say a bit I don't remember whether it's considered one of the major influences for Twin Peaks but anyway yeah so um that should not work because why would you construct a whole episode based on a series that your audience would never have been exposed to they would not get the references for but somehow it just simply works it just does you don't need to understand the reference and again like you watch it and you're like this is weird but it was the kind of weird that i liked i liked the weirdness of this episode yeah it does come out it's just like yeah there's something that works for it and i gotta say love how the system as you saw that shot does look like a golf ball but then it (laughs) zooms in and shows you it's because of all these like satellites with elevators inside of them how cool is that yeah this is one of the coolest random it's like, so cool systems yeah. that they come to yeah I, I almost wanted to see more of the system and what's going on here because it's so neat but again i also kind of like that they just give you a little like tease of it yeah and your mind gets to like Imagine fill in yeah. what it is yeah not again we have to go into this where i thought he just said it's i have to pee <laughs> not again <laughs> This that would actually be a really perfect line for having just gotten on like a super long <laughs> elevator ride. Yeah. And Andrea is to totally that person who's go. been like, oh my god, uh, how many times have I told you to go before we leave? Drink some cranberry this juice, by the way. one that gets us to a new system. Yeah, this one and hundreds before it. We never even found a system with ports to the net. <laughs> even Frisket is just sitting there being now. like, oh, not again. I'm we'll <laughs> so bored. All we need is a little luck. I give up. Oh. Too late, lover. Good, good but delivery. here's the thing with, like, yeah. That was, yeah, I agree. But, like, I think this might be the only episode of Reboot where, like, the central conflict, like, the whole thing is just, like, if you're looking at the traditional narrative conflict from your English Another class, golf game. the whole Glitch. thing in this episode, as Stats. we're going to see, is man versus self. Right. Glitch. And, Stats. like, I think other episodes of Reboot have had, like, it doesn't work. aspects of that. 
but they always try uh, to Enzo. externalize it into an outside conflict at the same Enzo. time. So there's something mm -hmm. actually going on. Like Dot and her identity. Crisis. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But this episode is fully 100% man versus self. We're inside yeah. again. You know, which I find really interesting. Here? I don't care. I'm home. One thing I do love about this is the dream quality and how like yeah. when you're in a dream in a and you, you're it seeing something you want to see right? but there's something that wrong with it. Friend. Yeah, and, and how, how it feels really just well. a little bit off. Yeah. Maybe it's a program copy or system backup. And like how much Matrix wants to believe it even though it obviously it can't be true. Be. Yeah. Like this feels so real to me. And in this moment he seems so much like Enzo. Yeah, like he looks at the, the like his profile of his like character design and his hair, and like you see Enzo in him in those right. moments, right? Yeah, it just oh, totally. Looks like the place yeah. I knew. Could there are none of my friends, family, no. Bob! And I love like I remember watching this episode the first time, and you experience the same thing Matrix does. We'll You're never like. Catch them. This makes no sense, and and you just oh, want the mystery to be I answered. You're yeah, like, that's what right. are Bob and Dot doing Please here? Like, what could actually be going on? It can't be what I think them. it is, but is it what I think it is? Dot looks great. <laughs> yeah, right. Now you did it. You got Bob mad at us. Me? Why is it always me? He's mad at you too, you know. No, he is not. He is mad at me. And even too. the nature of this I scenario know. feels so like first season. <laughs> yeah, they did you a know? good job with that. one of you. You're not. Oh, I'm feeling better already. Good. Glitch! Energy driver! Although I believe this is now Assume Ian James Corlett's uh, version of Bob. Yes. I'm pretty sure he yeah. has at this point. Bend over. <laughs> oh. Be seeing you. And like how there's so many golf references dropped throughout that right. you don't even necessarily you think now? about being there. Actually, yes. And it is funny because it's like, oh, why golf? Dot. Why? Yeah, but for the some thing, reason yeah. it does work. We yeah. have a problem. We're on our way, Fong. Is it possible they found a way to And I will point out that this episode was written mode? by Dan Didio, the story editor on right. the season. So, no, you know, of course, he's going to do a great job. Yeah. And that wouldn't explain Bob or a functioning glitch. Why didn't you call to them? I wanted to, but I couldn't. And so I believe everything about Matrix in this episode Let's right now. Like, I love that he's still no. skeptical about What's it. What's the matter? Yeah. I can't. I might reboot as little Enzo. Little and like, or large. like his emotional so conflicts, matter. not wanting to call to them, not wanting to reboot. Like you. I believe a hundred percent of it. I've worked hard to become yeah, what I am. Definitely, it's all so like. Boy behind me. There's again, where the last episode was like, there's well, no reason there's only one way for these out. characters specifically to be acting okay. like this. And this episode is a hundred percent. This is absolutely driven by everything I believe Matrix would reboot. say to do. And that, like, he really does a great job. <laughs> I love that. It's so oh, good. My. Right down to Frisket as Scuzzy, like... What have we done? We've gone viral. I guess this rules out the family reunion. Can it get any worse? Hack and slash! Reporting for duty! What? Alphanumeric. <laughs> That's a good line. Surveillance reports Hexadecimal and Megabyte have teamed up. Teamed up? Yes, they are in the tour. If those two are working together, we're all in trouble. But usually when they join forces, Hex's insanity or Megabyte's greed stops them every time. Yes, but they he's are trying his best, but he's no Bob. Yeah, they I mean, I do eventually get used to one. the new one. Let's Bob. Place, I do, yeah, but it, it takes more than one episode for sure I'm to sorry. adjust. Yeah. Frisket. I think it's because he's trying too hard to be Bob at the beginning. Number yeah, he must be the objective makes it of his own. Game. <laughs> That's such a good little moment. It is. <laughs> this feels weird. Listen! 
Number one must be the objective of this Love game. That. I know. If it's and a game, throughout this episode, I thought it was, something I noticed is that they do a really sure. good job honest, with the sound I'm editing, sure transitioning anymore. their voices between one another. Because sure, there are points where they have lines where they start the line as the one character, like they'll start as Andrea, but end the line as hexadecimal. And every time it's seamless. Yeah. It's like really, yeah. Nice touch. What do you mean? And Many I do love like they boys. how you they animate and it's Andrea as hexadecimal. You can still kind of see Andrea Just under there, but she's also still very hexadecimal. Boy, right. like so strong and commanding. Definitely not a little boy's. No, it's something worse. It represents everything I hate. Is that everything you hate? Or everything you're afraid of becoming. That's a moment where they do it really <laughs> well. And I guess they weird. accentuate it with her changing yes. her mask in the moment she changes Maybe voices, then this right? Makes but... sense. Uh, could you pass me my legs? <laughs> Such a good line. Because <laughs> how did he do like it this. before? I know. Yeah. I assumed that's what quiet. Cyrus was around for. This is not like Megabyte yeah. at all. Yeah. Perhaps Megabyte later on, is anyway. Like well, you know, hack and slash are super strong. They probably yeah, they, I think they did that a lot of the time. Megabytes. True, but something is different. Megabyte is not behaving normally. Sir, looks like there's a bogey heading towards the principal office. I do find the uh, episode Bamber, interesting in that I it shows us it their perspective. Like, yeah, that is something kind of unusual to me, too. Definitely a bogey. A bogey Especially, like, megabyte. given what we know about well, how this episode like turns out. That it is all in those kind of internal right. world. Oh, love these drums and this little, like, musical cue, which I think is also meant to, like, this music, I believe, is meant to reference that prisoner music, but don't quote me on that, not having seen the prisoner. Okay. But this is such a unique musical cue that we don't hear, we hear it repeatedly in this episode, Yeah. but we don't hear it anywhere else in the series, right? We need to talk now. No way, Megabyte. I don't know how you got in, but I'm showing you out. <laughs> Bob, if this was a game, I could end it right now. But I won't. <sighs> There's a lot of really good reaction shots in this episode, I have yeah. to say. Why should we trust you, Megabyte? No, not Megabyte. Sis, it's me. I'm Enzo. He's crazier than Hexadecimal. You're not my brother. You're not Enzo. You have to believe me. Maybe if I find number one. And this really showcases Paul Dobson's voice acting as a more than any other episode. One. It's true. Because oh, you really. Wait, good. Yeah, you really get to the heart of him in this episode. Yeah. And so often you get Stop. guys who can play never be my rough brother. and grouchy. So but they can't put the underlying, like, like sensitivity. Please. Yeah. I've changed. But I'm still Enzo. It's not going to work, Megabyte. And like Your that being that line being number. the literal theme of the episode, but they do such a natural job of setting up for it. Right. Yeah. He must be filed and. Indexed. And like that's an example of weird that I like. Because like, yeah. you're like, what? Yeah. This is so not in keeping with the regular tone of the show. But in this episode, it actually means something when you have those weird breakaways. Like they're setting something up. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's supposed to be very trippy. Yeah. I will not be pushed, filed, stamped, briefed, debriefed, or And I'm pretty sure that's an actual line yeah. from the prisoner. You won't hold me! And how he, like, goes to the point of actually using Megabyte's powers, yeah, right? Yeah, right, to get out. Oh, this is a good scene. <laughs> yes, it is. Happy? Sad. Happy? Sad. Happy? Sad. Intrigued. I've never been so in touch with my emotions. And like a lot of nice camera framing was going on there too, I found. Nice bike. <laughs> That's a nice bike. <laughs> what is it with you and bikes? <laughs> and that is where that line comes from. Yep. They didn't believe me. Why should they? 
To them, I'm Megabyte. I did nothing to prove otherwise. It is nice too to see wrong with being like um, Matrix's body that? movement yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, under Megabyte's like real? frame, yeah. The strength, the control, the power. And where Andrea Everything gradually becomes more hexadecimalish yeah, in her posture and her posing. But not yes, like this. yeah. This takes a lot of skill to do this kind of thing, I find. Yeah, well. To animate right. Megabyte as, and, you know, as Matrix and... Enzo. Yeah, it makes you wonder how Even they went about doing it. them all to do it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird thing to say, Enzo. <laughs> well, you, you, anything yeah. you want to talk about? That escalated so quickly. <laughs> well, Fong? I've decided yeah, with you these scenes, I mean, like, it does seem odd for what is, like, an internal first-person experience that Matrix is no, having I, currently, I as is revealed at the end of the episode. But uh, I guess, like, in a dream, it's maybe not unheard of yes, to have a... We're on our way. To an have an, yeah. yeah, or, like, to oh, see a, something going on in the third person as well as your own How's subjective your experience. Mind? <laughs> Just as many corny oh. golf jokes as they could get in, but we know that Reboot has never shied away from the corny jokes. No, makes Reboot, Reboot. One thing about this episode is, like, it is, even for, like, fans, it is weirdly comforting to be in the mainframe setting again. In yes. Doc's Diner and Sector yeah. 31 and... Even if it's wrong. I know, like but you just feel so at home Dots being back Diner. here. Predictable. Yeah, it's unexpected. Well, <laughs> if this is a game, I say we find number one and end it now. Spoken like a true virus! Andrea, you're taking your role a little too seriously. I'm just playing, fighting up Megabyte. That's Matrix. <laughs> this insanity stops now. Kind of shows what he thinks of her, too. <laughs> yeah, really? Seriously. She's she like... does spend a lot of time, like, whacking him and smacking <laughs> him. I really like how he like leapt in there and yeah, but yeah. Then everything slows down. Great music here too, and sound Where is design. number one? Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Everybody knows that. That still gets stuck in my head sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> to this day. I love how he like bops along to it. I do like that Bob is just super the weird in this. I know. <laughs> read the charges. My lord, the defendant is charged with believing that the ends justify the means and of becoming everything he claims to hate. Well, and Honor, I like Jerry, like how they how you give you like glasses defendant? mode dot for this scene, <laughs> yes. just to make her look more serious than she even already does look. Your Honor, this is no trial. Where's my defense? Good point. Bring in the character witnesses. I love how they come in singing that. Like, it's so weird. And what do you have to say? I love how Slash keeps singing. Like, oh, that's such a good touch. Oh, yeah, and mean. Yeah, go away, forgot me. And mean. How does the jury find the defendant? Guilty, 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 guilty. Dem boats, dem boats, dem. And goodbye. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make me want to see the prisoner. But to be fair, yeah, I've had moments brother, watching this episode me. of being like, I should really Stop go back and see that show. Ah, uh, you broke her. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words. You've betrayed the memory of your sister. How does the jury find the defendant? Guilty! 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 Kiss. Have you anything <laughs> right. to say before I execute you? But also, Sorry. like... Pass sentence. <laughs> Please, help me. Like, Megabyte is much taller this. than Bob. And yet, in that shot, they specifically yeah. made Bob his height, which guilty, was clearly deliberate, right? Guilty, yes. Guilty. 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 Guilty, 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 I can see that being a really weird line to deliver 
for the voice actor playing guilty. Yeah. Guilty. But it works. You killed them too. Oh. Yeah. That's what you do now, Matrix. So you've killed everyone. Good. <laughs> Haven't you figured it out yet? I know I have. So cool. Like, yeah, just like, I, super cool. Tell me. I can't get over how creative and good that is. is. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> the funhouse music again. I am number But I guess it's one. also for he's a jolly good fellow, right? Right. Force yeah. In your life, I am hatred. I drive you on and consume you. No! I'm just always so sucked in by this point in the episode. I know. Doesn't matter how many times I've seen it. It's it's done well. I am number one. I care for no one. That's not true. I love Andrea. No, you don't. You love yourself. Just looking out for number one. <laughs> Have she done here? Anything? <laughs> Jeez. No, not you. Really good drum. I yeah, am number thing one. There. The original. Do you think this is a game? Do you? But how? You're me. But you hate me. You must. Look at what you've become. You're wrong. I had to become bigger, tougher. And like the I young Enzo's voice actor does a great job here games. too. Yeah. Did you like the games more than Mainframe? More than your family? No, no, I didn't. I was trapped in the games. Games, games, games. It was only a game. You killed my family! My family! You've forgotten your family! You let yourself become a prisoner of the games. What would Bob think of you now? Bob. Oh. There can be only one. That whole set of dialogue, I think, is just really you. good. And this whole thing is interesting, too, because, like, nothing external is really at stake here. No. It's all, again, 100% the man versus self-conflict. Okay? He's not in any danger. Yeah. No. I guess. What Although happened? I do have to say, I, <laughs> I guess he's not Matrix rebooted, but I'm like, does this somehow imply golf that this golf game has a mechanic whereby your, like, in-game character can Is be knocked out <laughs> by a stray golf ball? <laughs> <laughs> also, these are supposed to be three um, references to actual golf players, but Tiger Woods is the only one I know because Where I don't know we? golf at all. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. I've had driving nuts that shot. But I, I know, know, I know, like, I've read the names dreaming. before, but they don't mean anything to me. No, no from. shade to any golf fans. No, yeah, yeah well. we just if that's your thing, yeah. And win the game. Good job, Alan, Andrea. I love her little golf outfit, too. She's so cute. I just noticed the band on the top of her hat. It's like her, like, but that's like her pattern, yeah. This has to end. We're taking control. The search for mainframe and Bob begins now. Welcome back. Now, who hit that golf ball? Gun command. Line. Speaking of not having learned anything, <laughs> I, I do like that. It's Me less too. That like that is who he is. Yep. Be seeing you. I'm just gonna brutally murder one of these adorable characters. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> so that's not the lesson that was no. learned at all. But yeah, like, basically, the start of that episode is Matrix is tired of this quest and it's wearing him down. And then the ep end of the episode is just, no, he's got renewed vigor for mm -hmm. finding home again. And that was all that needed to happen in the like in this episode. And like I'm, you know, if you've watched any other of these episodes, you probably know that I'm very big on stakes. I need stakes in my episode. I need consequences for things going wrong. But this is an episode where there's no external consequence or no risk of one. Mm -hmm. 
Aside Whether from he, like him not learning his lesson. Yeah, but like there was, he was still going to go on just fine after he woke up from the dream, mm-hmm. you know, other, Maybe. besides, well, yeah, besides deciding that like, he now we're going to find main, dream, right? but like, yeah, he did. But like, on the other hand, like they're not in any more power to find mainframe now than they were before. Maybe. You know, like He's they don't have any tools for it. A lot of game sprites. <laughs> a lot. I have to get back to mainframe now. Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom, boom. boom. Yeah. This is gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, yeah, so so there's but there's nothing really external he's made or created. Like he hasn't really changed any wor- status quo of the world that he's in. Yeah. It's just a change in his internal status quo. That is it. And normally for reboot, I would be like, that's not really enough. But in this episode, it is. Mm-hmm. Like it's it is nice because you do need to get some sense of where Enzo has been and where he's come from and where, like, yeah. where, why he is the way he is yeah, now. Yeah, because we like, had such a big gap in his development as a character mm-hmm. that, yeah, we've only really seen him being the front of Matrix, like that persona that he projects to the world. And, uh, yeah, I think we really did need a moment because Matrix is a pretty new character. Like we've had yeah. Enzo, but this is a whole other character in a lot of ways. We really need a moment to step back and see, okay, get under this guy's skin and see how he ticks a little bit. Right. And how does he relate back to Enzo? Cause he seems like there's no real through line there at all sometimes. So we had to be reminded that it's still him. Yeah. And he's trying his very best to not be that. Yeah. So making conscious decisions to avoid being referenced back to that little guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So and also viruses, I guess. Yeah, that too. Yeah, bloodthirsty, yeah. <laughs> gun shooting viruses. But yeah, and I think that's why this episode works. Where where no spread has gone before doesn't is the thing that gets me about this episode is it is so cohesive. Yeah, everything in it, every bit of dialogue, every scene, just is like all all the episode is trying to be is this one thing, mm-hmm. and every scene supports that one thing that it is. Yeah. And Although, then you do it with like, this weird framing device of the prisoner, so. Well, I, it's funny, though, that we've got the prisoner plus the golf, unless there's golf in the prisoner. But, like, that's sort of what I mean, though, is that, like, a lot of episodes will have that secondary reference, right? Like, Firewall was Bond-themed, and then they ended up in this kind of Toy Stories-type game, but then they still found a way to make the Toy Story game a Bond Bondish. Game. Yeah. And yeah. they gave it Bond-style action scenes. You yeah. know, like, they, they really had their main focus, and other things were kind of allowed in there. Yeah. But but I feel like where no sprite has gone before it has no focus. Right. You know, whereas this does. And it's like, okay, there's all this golf stuff in there and that's getting referenced. But the real sort of thematic driving thing is all this weird prisoner stuff, right? Yeah, it really makes you want to step back and think about the different ways that they will throw back or like reference, um, not throw back, reference to other shows and how often they piggybacked yeah. what they do. I don't know. I really want to go back and see how, like, how often they've done it and how often it's worked really well. Yeah, or how often it just seems to confuse things, you know. Mm. But I would say it probably works more often than it doesn't. Yeah, because I've always enjoyed it. Or yeah. I guess the thing is you don't notice it, so it must be good. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Or it doesn't stick out or you don't find it jarring, right? And I will say just before we wrap this one up, um, I just want to give a little anecdote um, that there was a year when me and some friends were able to go to Anime North when Paul Dobson was appearing at Anime North. But Katie could not make it. And Katie, at, at least at the time, loved Paul Dobson. Super fangirl. Yeah, yeah, was major fangirling Paul Dobson. So at one of the meet and greets, we got we got to pull him aside a little bit. And um, we got his permission to record him. And we we're just like, just say a, like a Matrix line. And I think, I think I threw some examples at him. And so we have a recording of Paul Dobson saying like, it was like, uh, I know he said the what is it with you and bikes line. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't remember whether there was a hey, I don't remember if he said like, hey, Katie, sorry, you couldn't make it or whatever. But he did say the, what is it with you and bikes? Yeah. Oh, I know. You guys are good friends. Yeah. Memories. memories. So whenever I see that line in this episode, that's what what I thought. They also got an autograph for me too. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Man, where are you now, Paul Dobson? We'll have to to figure that out. I mean, I put a lot of time into caring about who he was for a while there. So I should do that again. (laughs) Seriously, but anyway, with that, any more comments on number seven? No, I, I yeah, I enjoyed it, even though I don't, 
it's it's super weird. And I usually hate dream episodes. I usually just yeah, hate them. often they do not work. Yeah. But this one I just does I enough guess stuff a right. Amount, yeah, going on in it that matters. Yeah. Like that means something. And again, just putting you back in mainframe again and setting up that mystery and giving you these characters you love and you're familiar with, I think gives you an instant investment in it. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Or like you want it to be right just as much as he does. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. I yeah. Like no, I, I really, really like this episode. And every time I watch it, I'm totally sucked into it. I love the tension. I love the mystery. I love the weirdness. This is an episode that just a hundred percent works for me. And I think is well constructed, even like just objectively speaking. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Real strong episode number seven. So I guess that's it for now. Until next time, stay frosty. Be seeing you. It had to be that one. I know. Yeah. <laughs>